Hello, everybody. Welcome to Crimes and Times. I'm Michael Tabman. When I think about crime and justice, or crime and injustice, or injustice and crime and disorder, I think about the Wild West. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Joining me first is my co-host, Joel Nichols. Joel, thanks for coming. My pleasure. This is going to be a great conversation. It just, it, this, this person's life that we're going to talk about covers so many aspects of American life and American history. It's really fascinating. It is. And we're, we're meeting with an old Facebook friend of mine, Fred Rosen. Fred, you and I have known each other for a while on Facebook. Yes, uh, sir. We met through the author uh, sort of subculture, but you're a true author. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of a uh, hacker. Yeah? I write books, but you really write books. And uh, today we're going to talk about the Wild West. And Fred, when I think of the Wild West, and I think of all these names, uh, Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, yeah. Calamity Jane, uh, Billy the Kid. And yeah. sometimes I think, you know, we only know what we see on television. Uh, you know, I think of the ballroom brawls and the shootouts and then the good-looking sheriff coming up and putting an end to everything. But we don't really know who are the good guys, who are the bad guys, and really what was going on in the Wild West. And you picked a certain target or a certain person. Why don't you tell us about why you picked that person and tell us what you know about it. Well, the reason I picked Bat Masterson is, first off, I've been wanting to write a book about Bat Masterson for some reason. I can't... I, there was something about the guy's life. And I've been wanting to write a book about the guy, Michael, 40 years. Mm -hmm. But then what happened was... I was researching, you know, and of course, you know, Bat Masterson was popularly known, is popularly known as an old West quote unquote gunfighter, but in reality, he was the sheriff of um, uh, the county that included Dodge City. I always forget the name of it, but um, anyway, Buffalo Hunter. Uh, uh, Army Scout, Indian Fighter. But then I found out, and this is what got me, it gave me the oomph. When I found out he came to New York at the turn of the 20th century and became a crusading reporter who worked on the most notorious murder case in New York State, I went, oh man, I got to tell this guy's story. And then, as I continued to do the research, this part, the, I, 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 I became the only guy that I know of, author certainly, who knows that Bat Masterson was a dreamer from Canada. And at that point, I said to myself, Michael, I better tell this story now. There's, so, uh, you've yes. got Pat Masterson, who's sort of the quint one of the quintessential American heroes or anti-heroes, but he's not an American. Exactly, and exactly, and and not he's not an American, and he's on a United States stamp. <laughs> and I'm going. I'm saying to myself. You know, I, 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 it would help the book sales if somebody in the federal government tries to take them off the stamp. But that's the whole point. The point is, here is a guy who embraced our country. <clears throat> and he knew that if anybody found out, anybody, that he was a dreamer or, you know, an illegal alien... He was getting deported to Canada, and he'd lose everything. So he lied every single time to the census, which in those days, I, I, you know, you find this stuff out. You know, in those days, the census would ask a question about where you came from, and that stopped, I think, in the 50s. But Masterson would make up a story. You know, he'd make up a story. He, you know, he, he's, he's from Pennsylvania. He's, he's from Michigan. He, 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 you know, I think he even at one point he even said New York, which I Fred, cracked up on. Fred, so Joel makes a great point here. So yes. you're talking about a guy who's obviously a bit of a con man. Yes. Right? Just, Excellent. So is, he, is he a hero? Excellent. Hero, villain, what is he? Wow, what a great question. 
he's a hero because the reason that he was a con man in that respect, Michael, is because he would lose everything. Oh my God, I just realized something. It, 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 this is important. When he's in New York at the turn of the century, he becomes, you'll get a kick out of this. He becomes the deputy federal marshal for the Southern District of New York. <clears throat> in other, in other words, I was an FBI agent working for the Southern District of New York. Yes, ex exactly. Let's back, up. Fred, let's back up. Let's kind of go to when he first gets here and starts making his name. Okay, good. Yeah. Especially in Dodge City, because Dodge City, uh, as Joel points out, is just. Just got everyone knows about Dodge. Just get out of Dodge. Oh, right. yeah. oh, good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. At what point did uh, little Bartholomew from Canada become Bat Masterson of Kansas? How did that transition happen? What a great question. What Why happened? He's on the show. He's great. <laughs> He's Thank great. you, Joel. <laughs> yeah. What What happens is, what happens is he's he's um he's um uh, hunting, and. They, it, it, you know, the, the popular conception of the, of the nickname Bat has to do with the, with the cane, which everybody remembers from the TV series with Gene Barry. Right. It's got, got nothing to do with the cane. <laughs> got nothing to do with the cane. He was, he was a hunter, and there was an, another hunter who was very, very well known called Old Bat. And so... They started calling him Bat because he was legendary at his eyes, you know, as a hunter. I mean, that's the one, the, the interesting part about it is that in the TV series, they did that where he was this great hunter and it, it was true. But, but, but here's the thing. See, I, I should mention this because this is important. The first biography of Masterson was called uh, was Bat Masterson by Richard O'Connor. The TV series, when I was watching it as a kid, there would be a title card at the end saying, based on the book by Richard O'Connor. And at that point, I'm going, he's real? He's real? <laughs> you know, that's a great point. I bet a lot of our audience, and probably myself, if I didn't know you, Fred, before I said, is that a real character or just someone that was created right. for entertainment? And, well, you know what? And, and the, one of the, you know, one of the things is, it, that gets me, oh my God, what gets me about this is I talk about his friendship in the book and, and Batman's is in the first dreamer. I talk about his friendship with Wyatt Earp. Okay. And what do I find out? Okay. There's a biography. At, well, I knew this. The, the biography of Wyatt Earp is widely, by Stuart Lake, is widely considered to be fictional. I'm not the only guy saying that. It's, it's fictional. He made up a lot of it. Well, where did this guy, Lake, find out about Wyatt Earp? And that book, that Wyatt Earp legend becomes the basis for the TV series and, and the movies and all that stuff. Who told him about him? Bat Masterson. There you go. Lake. There's a lot of legend there. So what, give us the truth. You know, tell us about, you know, Bat's entree to the American scene of law. And order a law and disorder. Whichever you got Fred. What is that? What is that line, by the way? When uh, Michael's asking for the truth, there's a great line from the Man Who Shot Liberty Valance about when <laughs> you know the legend becomes the truth, print the legend or something. When like when that. the legend becomes fact, print the legend. Right. <laughs> oh you. Oh man, <laughs> boy, are you right? You know, and 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 that's exactly what happened with Masterson. But but here's the thing. What I what really got me was this, okay, you know, whether, whatever you, if you've ever seen either the TV series or anything about Masterson, you know, there's always a lot of shooting, right? Right. Well, in reality, Masterson was involved in seven murder cases, but he was intimately involved. And the what first- do mean, What do you mean by involved? And, and well, all the cases that got him to be a legend? Yes, I'm gonna tell you, listen to this. He, 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 he falls in love with a girl in Sweetwater, Texas, and... Um, well, who hasn't, Fred, really? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, but what happens is, 
what happens is there's a jealous guy who comes after him in a dance hall where he's with the girl and he shoots and the girl um um she um uh, um uh, throws herself in front of the bullet okay and she dies right in front of a bat and then the guy shoots again and shoots bat someplace in, in the lower part of his body it, 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 it hit the intestine whatever the point being he's left with a limp which is where the cane thing starts okay but meanwhile from from the floor bat looks up with it with his 45 or 44 whatever it was and he shoots the guy that just shot him and shoots the guy dead that's the first time bat masterson shoots a man okay now at that moment where was he in history what was he doing oh at that moment that uh, great question he, he was he was a buffalo hunter <laughs> that's it. it that's it nothing else he was above but but one of the things i also found out about this guy self-educated very interesting okay but now just moving further into this so then you know he's limping you know and he winds up in dodd city and that's where he runs into his old buffalo hunting friend wyatt earp who hires him as a deputy and later masterson runs for sheriff county office and it's there okay where the next two murders come in that he's involved next two times well, let me ask you what did he win did he win a sheriff first time okay and these two murders you're about to discuss were they while he was sheriff or not he's sheriff okay and, and his brother is a deputy marshal okay you know remember you know people have got to remember that you've got county offices and city or town offices Anyway, his, his brother Ed is, is, is a marshal. This is an, an unbelievable one, to me anyway, because here's what happens. His brother tries to disarm a couple of Texas cowboys. Masterson happens to be going down the street, and um, he comes running because he hears that his brother is in trouble. And what he sees is one of these Texicans shoots his brother. The, 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 this, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the it, it sets his vest on fire, his brother. So his brother goes down with his vest on fire and Masterson comes up. And at that point, the two bad guys turn around and shoot a bat and bat shoots them dead. Both of them. Both of them, Michael. I mean, this guy. Was it, was it one gun or two? Was it one? Uh, a great question. And, uh, no, that's the only. The only two guns are Sheriff Clay Hollister of Tombstone. Okay, fair but, enough. But but you know the thing is, technologically, those were hard guns to shoot and make hit anything. They yeah. were. They were, and and you're making such a good point. I mean, and, and, and that's not even getting into, the, you know, the, bu the buffalo hunting rifles. But what I'm getting at is that he shoots these guys dead. But, you get, but the thing is, it's obviously an emotional situation. You see, that's what gets, that's what I got into. Okay. And then there's more. There's more shooting. I mean, come on. Uh, you know, you know me. I'm not going to do a book unless I've got a man coming through the door with a gun, like Raymond Chandler says. <laughs> but, but but listen to this. There's a, there's an entertainer in Dodge City who is very famous. Her name is Dora Hand, and um, she, she she's she's in a in a in a I was going to say cottage. I guess it would be a shack. She's in a shack. And what she's doing is she, she's in the shack of the mayor of the town. And a, some guy has it in for the mayor. And he goes over to take a shot at the mayor. And he shoots her dead instead. What happens? There's a posse. Hmm. 
okay, there's a posse. Guys, there's a posse. Who's in the, who's in the posse? Who's in the posse? Bat Masterson and Wyatt Earp. Okay? I mean, oh, my God. You know, you know, like, oh, you know, the, 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 take a plane over here or whatever. But, but the thing is, they go out after the, the guy named Kennedy, who is the bad guy. And that, because of the fact that he, he, for some reason, he, he, he still used the Sharps rifle, and he had it with him. And this guy, Kennedy, I think he took a shot at them. Bat shoots him. The guy uh, is wounded, but later dies from the wound. Mm. So I ascribe that to Masterson also as somebody that he, that he killed. You know, Michael made such a great point earlier about how these names, like Wyatt Earp and <laughs> Bat Masterson, they seem like they're just something out of uh, literature, out of legend. They're not the real yeah. deal. Uh, I remember watching a concert once. Frank Sinatra was doing a concert in Las Vegas, and he introduced from the stage, he introduces Gene Barry, who was the star of Bat Masterson. And he said, oh, I want to introduce this good guy down here, Bat, or, and he kind of stumbled. Well, Gene Barry, he's, he always dresses like a million bucks, and I'm thinking, well, Sinatra's thinking of the character that he played that was always dressed like a million bucks. Right. You know, Gene Barry, but we think of these names. At what point did Masterson decide that the, the West that he went to was changing or dying or, or made it necessary for him to make this push to become Bat Masterson, the newspaper columnist, the writer, uh, I read somewhere, and you can tell me if this is true, The Great Guys and Dolls musical, uh, <laughs> the lead character is Sky Masterson. Yeah. Is that based in some way on Bat Masterson? Uh, I, I, I can't smile any bigger than I, than I am, uh, which is why, I, you know, I can't look at myself on camera. But, <laughs> but, but um, the, the answer is his best buddy, I mean, it, when I say best buddy, he was one of his uh, pole bearers, was Damon Runyon, right. okay, who at that point was a reporter, and he happened to have been, Runyon happened to have been a friend of Bat since he was a teenager, okay, back in, in, in Denver, excuse me, Denver. Anyway, anyway, listen to this. So they, you know, the, the answer is yes. Sky Masterson is based on Bat Masterson. Duh. You know, and you know, and, and not only that, I've always wondered, I've always wondered whether he he told anybody he was an illegal alien. And if he told anybody, it would be that guy. Right. Right. Fred, when, when he made this uh, shooting you just discussed, at that point or what point uh, had he developed his reputation as someone not to be messed with? Was he a feared person? Yes. Did everyone know about Bat Masterson. You don't want to mess with him. You know what? The answer is yes. And 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 the the the, the truth of it is, at some point, this is this got me. It, it was, you know, when you when you see <clears throat> currents of, of violent history coming together. There were these two drovers from Texas who happened to be in Dodge City. <clears throat> what were their names? Frank and Jesse James. Okay. They, they were masquerading as drovers in between bank robbers and stuff. And they were, conf Masterson actually had to confront them over something and nothing happened. The answer is everybody knew you don't draw on Bat Masterson. Even the James brothers, huh? Even the James brothers. Yeah, that's, it, it, you know, they grew up only about 20 minutes from where I'm sitting right now, the James oh, brothers. The James oh. Farm. Yeah, up in Kearney, in Kearney Missouri. And, and uh, the Frank James was in jail in Independence, which is about 20 minutes in Yes, and, right. and, and who was his luck? And that's another thing you find out, you know, these currents of history that sort of come together. Who 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 is Bat Masterson's lifelong? Uh, uh, I'm just gonna say email buddy. Oh, uh, uh, um, pen pal. Thank you. Right, you go. We gotta be old enough to know that term, right? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Who is his lifelong pen pal? 
Frank James. Hmm. They hit it. They hit it off. <laughs> they hit it off. And you know, but but see, the thing is, the thing is that there. Are, uh, you you asked a good question. How does he wind up ch changing, Joel? You ask that, okay? And the answer is, what happens is. <laughs> Um, he pisses off the wrong people. Did, he, did I just say that? It's okay. Okay. He, he, <laughs> he, 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 and, and they want him out of, out of Denver, and they hire uh, an old West gunfighter to get him out. But at that point, what's interesting is that Masterson, what I discovered, is that in the le last part of the 19th century, when boxing became popular and eventually a sport, and then you know they had to license it in, in states, um, mass, a lot of the uh, gunfighters got into it as protection. You know, so Masterson first got into it to to uh, you know as protect you know uh, security at a fight. Okay, but he really got into the the um, the art of boxing. Ironically, there was actually an episode of the series you can watch on YouTube uh, <laughs> where, where that happens. Okay, and what I'm getting at is that he got so into it that he started writing about it, and that was the inch. And he already had some other experience writing, but I got to tell you, I read his. Stories, they're in the book. I, 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 blew me away. This guy was one of the, is one of the most talented writers I've ever read. Hmm. Wow. And he's completely self taught. Completely self taught. And the other thing is, I just, you know, I, 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 I it's, it's interesting to see what a person's real personality is, okay? He covered Jack Johnson, the black heavyweight champion. All the other reporters who covered Johnson would say racist things, not Bat Masterson. Mm. He treated him just like anybody else, didn't care, you know, whatever. But now I got to tell you something, okay? Uh, I got to tell you about what happens, and this is the one that blew me away, okay? Um, in 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 uh, wait in 1906, okay. He's a you know he's a deputy federal marshal as I said. And there's a murder in upstate New York. And I need to define that for people, uh, right, Michael? Uh, upstate New York. Listen, Fred, I, I, you know, for two guys from Brooklyn, I'm glad we didn't go off on that bada be bada boom and Joel's like, what are you guys talking about? You know, so. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> exactly. Hey, well, I was watching Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Upstate New York, it's, it, 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 it's almost an amorphous entity. It's, it's, it's north of the Hudson Valley. Um, of course, it's north of New York City. And then you just go west. Well, it turns out, it turns out, I mean, I went there researching this book because Masterson gets involved with the trial of the century. That's what it was called by the newspapers, the most notorious sensational murder in New York State history. What happens? See if, okay, see if this sounds familiar from anything you've read or seen. This guy named Chester Gillette gets his girlfriend, Grace Brown, pregnant. And then he goes out in a rowboat with her and she drowns. He gets tried for murder. It became the basis for Theodore Dreiser's novel, An American Tragedy. And later in 1952, I think it was, the film A Place in the Sun with Montgomery Clift, Elizabeth Taylor, and Shelley Winters. But here's the thing. This is a big case. This case is so big 
that the town Herkimer in upstate New York where they where the trial took place, it's a tourist stop. Hmm. You go you go there. This, this is the first time, except for, except Michael. This is the first time, Joel. This is the first time I've ever given a tour of jail cells, except for Alcatraz. <laughs> okay, I got a tour of jail cells, and here's the thing. Bat Masterson covered the case. As a reporter. Yes. And what happened was his, I think, well, they needed a reporter to go up and cover it. All the other newspapers were covering it. Well, his, 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 his editor did the smart thing. Who are you going to send to cover a big murder case? How about somebody who's got some experience with murder? <laughs> Right. And can and can write, and he's armed because he, he's he's still working as 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 a deputy marshal. So he takes the train up there, you know, and he goes and he covers the case. What happens? Oh boy, the, 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 he sits. He's he's in the courtroom every every day. Here's the evidence, all that stuff, and and finally the case go. Uh, what happens is, I should I'm, I'm rushing through it. What happens is the the prosecutor pulls a lot of shady stuff, okay, in, in, including bringing in the the uh, fetus of the girl that dies. Hmm. He brings the fetus in in formaldehyde. Okay, uh, you know I think the word is there's no probative value, but uh, so what happens is prejudice versus probative value is how they usually talk about it. Huh? Prejudice versus probative value. Is yeah. You more prejudice, or you create more evidence. This case clearly, as you said, is going to create more prejudice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And and then what happens is the, the, the eventually the jury goes out to consider their verdict, and this is the part that got me: a lynch mob forms, and they're you know and, and so the jury knows if they don't convict this guy they're in trouble, so they convict him. What happens with Bat? He goes back to New York. And he writes a story, and the headline is New Style Lynch Law in Upstate New York. Mm. Only that. And what happens? The judge finds him in contempt of court for writing that. And even though, you know, it, it, it would, it's a First Amendment case, he sends, he sends a, 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 a deputy down to arrest Bat, take him back upstate, and then Bat pays a $50 fine, okay? And it, it, so here's a situation where Bat Masterson is literally involved in a First Amendment case, you know, which is, which is really something. So Fred, what you're describing, at least to me and Joel, I'm sure you feel the same, is uh, we're not talking about an outlaw. We're not talking about a rogue sheriff who was just existing on his front slinger abilities. He sounds like a man of great moral character. You know, it's very interesting you say that. Um, I needed somebody to write the foreword to the book. And through circumstance, I became friends with Tony Dow, who, be, who was Wally on Leave it to Beaver. And Tony said exactly the same thing, which is that when he read the book, what he found was that Masterson had values that other individuals in the same job did not have. And he, and he writes about that in, in, in the foreword. And it, it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, that you point that out. You know, it's very interesting you point that out. I mean, the fact, you know, I, met, I, I, I sort of glossed over it early when I talked about Wyatt Earp, who, of course, is more well-known, I would say. But Wyatt Earp was a real killer. I mean, he, he liked it, you know, 
for, I mean, we're not going to talk about Doc Holliday, obviously, but but Earp, 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 Earp really killed people. You know, it, it, not self defense is what I'm saying. Right. That's so what might, I'm saying. I think we might be coming up against the clock here, Michael. You okay. Know better than I would, but before we do lose you, Fred, do you uh, miss these guys? I mean, you research them, you write about them, and then the book goes out. Do you miss hanging around with them, at least you know, in terms of writing and researching them? And they were in your life for a while. What a fantastic question. Uh, I wish I had a guy like you riding shotgun. Uh, I got him. And you got I that's that's okay, but but I, you know what? I, yes, I do, and in fact, I'll tell you what I'm thinking of doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of doing a book, considering the uh, tenor of the times, about a Mexican American lawman who became a legend named El Fago Baca. And it was a mini series that Disney did. And then I, you know, you start doing some research, you know, and, but you, you know, you're right. It, it, if you're going to hang out with people for a while, you know, it's, it, historically they become part of your life. You want to hang out with good people. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Fred, I want to follow up on the question uh, Joel asked you earlier. As Matt Masterson makes his transition out of gunslinging to be yes. a reporter, was this more of his own? personal maturation, or was this a result of the gunslinging days maybe coming to an end as society progressed, or a combination of both? I would, that's a great question. I would say a combination of both. He was sick, he was sick and tired of the violence. He didn't like the violence. You know, that's the thing about this guy. You know, he, he avoided violence whenever he could. You know, and um, unfortunately, <laughs> he, he didn't carry the cane as much as Gene did. <laughs> but, but, you know, um, but even in New York, uh, there was a situation where some guys gave him trouble in the Waldorf Astoria. And he could have, and you know what he did? Oh, this is cool. He used his reputation. He reached into his pocket and came out with something in his hand, and the, 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 the bad guy thought it was a gun and walked away. It was a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> Interesting. So, Fred, we wrap this up. Give us one, you know, great insight into Bat Masterson, and then tell us about, you know, the name of your book and where we can find it. Okay. Uh, thank you, Michael. Um, this, is, this is a story about a man, a great insight. Wow. Um, this is a story about a man who was a great American and, and a man who, 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 as an immigrant, did what so many immigrants do. He reinvented himself. And that's, that's, and, and in the process, contributed to our society in, in a number of different ways. I mean, his legacy, I got to tell you, his legacy as a reporter, un unbelievable. Um, and the book is available at uh, Amazon.com. And, and it's the name of the book? Bat Masterson, The First Dreamer. What's the name of that great author? Oh, his name? Uh, 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 Fred Rosen. <laughs> that, 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 sound, that sounds great. You know, it's funny, Fred, you're talking about that now. Uh, you know, Joel and I in our conversation talked about the tenor of the times and, you know, you're talking about, you know, immigrants and what they can provide to society and what is their place in American society. Certainly a topic, you know, of the day. It is. On, on another level. You bet. It is. Uh, well, Fred, thank you very much. And uh, for everyone else out there, you know, uh, doesn't know Fred, that's not his only book. Fred's a, quite a prolific, successful author. So if you go to Amazon.com, run his name, Fred Rosen, and you'll find more books. Joel, any closing thoughts for us tonight? What a fascinating uh, person that we should know more about. And the fact that the Masterson lived into the 20th century, he, this is not somebody that is, you know, 400, 500 years ago. This is pretty recent. And his and I, story oh, is yeah, so, man. Yeah, it's so contemporary. It is a contemporary story. I, I told my mother she was alive at the same, she's al was al is, was al is alive at the same time. Yeah. So, so you know, yeah. 
Wasn't that long ago? That really is, that really is truly amazing, Fred. Thank you for coming on, buddy. It's good to see thank you again. You, thank you. Good to see you again. Thank you, Joel. It's, it's wonderful to see you guys. Thank okay, you, thank you to thank our you. audience for joining us tonight on Crimes and Times, and we'll see you next week with another exciting guest. Thank you.